Whew, it's that time of year again. 2023 coming to a close. It's just been a crazy year for me, my family, in all sorts of areas, basketball wise, professionally, relationally, all sorts of different things have been happening. We lived in three different countries, Germany, then back to the States, and now in Portugal. Me and my wife, we got married this summer. Best day of my life. We added a new puppy to our family. It's just been a, a very fun year full of a lot of cool experiences and great moments. And I think it's important to reflect on these moments. If you want to become a bigger person, I mean bigger as in better, you have to reflect. You have to really soak in experiences and think back on them to get lessons, to, to learn, to become, you know, to expand, right? To expand your perspective. So I wanted to summarize and go through my reflections from this year, some of the big events and some of the cool moments and some of the lessons I learned from this year. So here is the 2023 year in review. So 2023 started, uh, me and my wife, we were in Oldenburg, Germany, playing for EVE Baskets Oldenburg. This was my first experience, I would say, playing high level European basketball. And what I mean by that is European basketball is very structure based. It's not like the NBA or G League or even some college situations where there's a lot of isolations, a lot of stuff like this. It's a lot more continuity, read and react. And the levels I'd played before Germany were not like that. First time adjusting to a European system. And I would say there's a steep learning curve. And at this time around January is when I had started to kind of understand it. I had been playing well to start the season, but then January hit, hit, hit a little rough patch, stuff like this. Germany, for me, basketball wise, was my first experience with a high level European system, knowing how to read and react to different defensive coverages. And even from a personal standpoint, having a role where it was my job to make some of those decisions. I had to learn how to carry a lot of responsibility on a, on a team, a high level team. I think it was around February time we played the cup championship. And this was a very monumental thing because my club hadn't been in the final four of the cup for a while. Uh, they hadn't been in the championship since 2008. So it was a huge thing for the organization and we hosted it in our hometown. If you guys don't fully understand overseas basketball, it's like in some places you will play basketball is the lifeblood. It's like a religion in the city. And that's how it was in Oldenburg. And that's why I love my time there. Every game we'd have about 5,000 fans sold out and it was like they lived and breathed basketball. And so the cup is a great memory in my mind because it was also a time when I played or when we played against a EuroLeague team. And for me, it was kind of like a checkpoint in my career as I try and elevate to levels is playing against those high level teams. And it was fun because I played really well and we came up short as a team, but it was an experience where I for sure, it wasn't like a, oh my gosh, I made it moment, but it was like, oh, I'm taking another step in my career. And yeah, it was a really cool feeling. In Oldenburg also, I had, I had the luxury of my mom, my dad, and my sister all visiting. That was also a really cool experience, having my dad there. It was just really funny because of the way he interacted with fans. The Oldenburg fans were so welcoming. I mean, I remember dropping him off at a game outside the arena because he couldn't come in with me. I had to do a pregame and all that. He's so funny. He, I, I got him a jersey, so he unzipped his, his vest when he was walking up to just a group of fans. Like, you gotta remember, a lot of times, like, they spoke some English, but not great English. And my dad is like, he's loud, he's boisterous, he's, he's confident. And he's like, hey guys, like, you mind if I walk with you in the game? And they were like, kind of like, what is this big, goofy American dude doing? And then they were like, kind of looking at him funny. And then he unzips his vest, pulls out the number five, like he was wearing my number five jersey. And he was like, no, I'm Trey, Trey Drexel's dad. And they were like, oh. And it was just a, it was a funny moment for me because that's like something you dream of as a kid. I mean, my dad's my biggest fan. And, and I just, that's like, it's like, a, will be a core memory, I think, my whole life in terms of my relationship with my dad. and in my basketball career. So it was a super fun moment. It was also crazy that we found out, we looked up Ancestry.com and I was playing in Oldenburg, Germany. And we found out my family, the Drexels back in the day, Ernst Drexel, he immigrated to America from Bremen, which is like 30 minutes away from the city I was playing. A crazy, crazy full circle moment. Germany was my first half of the year. Great experience there. I loved it. Fans were incredible. A lot of adjustments personally and professionally. And it, I think it was the first moment in my basketball career where I had to accept that what got me to this point won't get me to the next point. And for me, kind of my MO or my thing has been just, you know, work harder, work harder, work harder. And this was kind of a wake up call of hard work is not gonna get me to the next level. I had to be more cerebral. I had to be more conscious 
of things that were happening. I needed to be more smarter on the court. I needed to elevate my understanding of the game. And I think it took me a little bit to adjust. And like any profession, there's gonna be moments where there's like a steep learning curve because maybe it's not your strength. And naturally, for me, naturally, I can work harder. I feel like I'm one of the hardest workers in this profession. But being able to take a step back and realize that the hard work wasn't the answer, but learning the game more, making better decisions, more that big picture was really tough on me. So that is really important as uh, basketball players is to be able to reflect and take that step back and realize what got you to this point isn't necessarily the answer that's gonna take you to the next point, right? And the other big thing I learned in Germany too is as being a professional, you need to have a routine. I've always been big on routines, but your routine has to match not where you're currently at, but where you aspire to be. In Germany, I just revamped my whole like routine for the day, small habits and stuff that I knew were necessary to give me that next level. But yeah, Germany, first half of the year, incredible. Yeah, a lot of lessons to be learned there. So then about June hit, and that's when headed back to the States, like, like every, every pro basketball player does, or every overseas guy does. It's a very surreal feeling. You have just lived in another country and you head home and that feeling on the plane, if you, especially if you felt like you did almost everything you could in your situation is very, it's like a, it's like a breath. It's like a, it's like a, the job's done. Let's take some time to rest and reset. And so, I remember I took some time off from hoop, which is very important. I suggest everyone after the basketball season take some time off. Forget about basketball for a little bit, because then when you come back, you'll be a lot more hungry. After the break, the start of my summer was a lot of training and a lot of, again, training, not necessarily with the sole focus of hard work, but that curiosity and how can I tweak little things. It's a lot more of a tweaking summer instead of just like a high workload. But also, I got married this summer with my beautiful wife, Carly. Carly Drexel now, which is fun to say. Yeah, that was like the best day of my life, hands down, with all my friends, family, and everybody able to witness that moment where we just like commit to each other forever. And it was like a interesting thing too, because now when I think of like my life in general, there's something more important than basketball. And that's my wife. Like now, moving forward, including the decision to come to Lisbon and play for Benfica, it was more than just basketball, it was my wife and basketball in terms of the decision-making process and that's a uh, an interesting feeling for me because and I know a lot of young hoopers it's like basketball you know ball is life and that culture is drilled into our brain from a young age if you want to make it in basketball it has to be ball is life and nothing more but once you get married and once you you realize there's much much more to life I guarantee you the basketball side the, the ball is life side will will actually improve and so yeah, this summer was incredible being back home with family and just getting in the gym, working with my guy Dante and marrying the love of my life. When we considered the next step for the second half of the year, that's where we get into um, to Portugal. One of our priorities in free agency was living in a good city and situation where I could grow as a man in terms of work-life balance and leaving work at work and separating the home, like protecting my mood and how I interacted with my family, protecting that from all the stresses at work, all the stresses at basketball. And I think this was this has been a huge lesson I've learned in the second half of the year. And I think it's very important for athletes in general is separate your sport from your life because when the two are intertwined, your life can turn very quickly from things you don't control. And that's, it's a very, very crippling feeling because you have no control over your life if you're letting your sport determine your life. So that's, and that's what I see, you know, you know, I would used to be like this too, man. Like if I had a bad game, it was like the next two days were gonna be bad. If I had a bad practice, I was gonna go back later in the day and fix it. And I'm not saying those are bad concepts, the idea of wanting to be better and grow, but it's the techniques. It's the ability to calm yourself, the ability to relax, the ability to prioritize something else. Those are important because then when you're actually playing a game, you need those same techniques to manage the emotions of the game and to make better decisions in those moments and not just revert to like, let me fix it, let me this. Because sometimes even in basketball, even in your sport, the answer is not like that oomph. Let me fix it. And so work-life balance has been the number one thing I've been focusing on. And in my time here in Lisbon and Portugal, me and my wife, we've really fallen in love with this city, this country. It's been interesting to notice the differences 
because it's I'm not saying it's always good to compare situations but it's a natural thing when you go from one country to another and in terms of Germany to Portugal they're night and day difference in terms of culture principles uh, personality I'm trying to explain this the best I can without I'm, I'm trying to be respectful to both cultures but like Germany is very rigid structured very by the book I think that's why they're one of the greatest countries in terms of innovation and scientific breakthroughs that's kind of their cultures like let's work boom 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 be on time uh, have a plan boom 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 what I've noticed here in Portugal it's very much more go with the flow more creative more oh that's okay as long as we have the main thing the main thing let's some of the details you can leave to the side if we are locked in on the on our purpose and our goal it's been just crazy to experience because it's been both in basketball in lifestyle a good example is this might be a little off but like a crosswalk right if in Germany if that little guy up there said red no one's walking across no, not not a chance because the rule is not walk across and that's safer and most people say that's objectively better but it might be slower whereas in Lisbon if that thing's red and no cars are going people will walk and it's just a different like mindset I don't know how to explain it. I think that embodies it but it's been very interesting to see it's been very fun and in some moments tough to adjust to especially because that same concept applies to basketball and the stylistic differences that I've had to manage and, and deal with. In Germany, it was very, if this happens, you do this. If we attack this way, you react this way. And we have those similar principles here in my club now in Benfica, but it's more so, yeah, but if the defense does this, react. Like it's, there's still this like subtle star, like asterisks, like, but you play, like play what's right in front of you. You have the freedom to respond to whatever you see and trust yourself. So it's been, it's been, it took me at the start, like a while to adjust to the team and learn guys will, you know, break the play if they see something instead of just sticking to the rules. And so I think I've done a decent job. I, I, I played solid, but it's been, it's been interesting. Also, in the last, I want to say last two months, I played basketball Champions League for the second time in my career. It's been fun, able to travel around, went to Desmaliki, Greece, went to Antalya, Turkey, went to Istanbul, Turkey, so Turkey twice. Got to experience new cultures. I think I've done a good job trying to, when I visit, get a little taste of the culture. What's well, been fun, I've been able to, I played well, I've learned again what high level basketball is. It's been fun trying to level up my documentation processes. I feel like you guys have been responding well to the game day vlogs and so kind of what has been the second half of my year. And yeah, I feel like it's just been a, a heck of a year. Oh, and I forgot. If you watched my most recent vlog, I got this baby girl, my baby girl Penny recently. She's sleepy. But yeah, we're, it's just been an incredible year. Me and my wife are beyond happy and we're really trying to use these experiences to level up as humans because I have big goals for 2024, for me, for my family, for my basketball career. And even five years in the future, I really want to keep growing, keep expanding. And I really want to take you guys on the journey with me. I don't know, I thought this would be beneficial for both me and you guys to kind of go through the mental process of reflecting on this past 2023, showing the importance of that self-reflection of taking in moments and using them to, to grow. And that growth mindset, I think, if I look at myself and my career, if a young athlete was gonna ask me, what's the number one thing that you need to become a professional athlete? I would say you need a growth mindset because you're never gonna get to that level if you don't allow the experiences to make you bigger, make you better. And so that's that's what this year in review is about. Hopefully you guys were able to get something from this and to feel my, the gratitude in my voice. And I'm just thankful for all you guys tuning in and, and getting, getting with the channel, getting with the heartbeat behind this and the dream of sharing and, and showing the life that I feel is completely dis, disregarded to people back in the States. And I don't know, it's, this has been rewarding and, and I really appreciate all, each and every one of you. Let's make 2024 even better. And so make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'm always gonna put the plug because I've got big plans for this channel and for you guys, I'm gonna include you guys more. I'm gonna try to reach out to the community more. I'm trying to invest more in the places that I play in. And so yeah, again, thank you for all the support in 2023 and let's make 2024 even better and we'll, we'll see where this journey takes us. So as always, get uncomfortable and live atypical. She got eyes and nose. She said, yeah, I know. Wish I could make it easier. I can't, I just know right and wrong.